and welcome to the first episode of Korean Cinema Today. Here in Seoul, this is Pierce Conran, and I'll be talking to you today about what's going on in the world of Korean cinema. Korean Cinema Today is a new podcast from KOBIZ, the online side of the Korean Film Council, which is also known as KOFIC. The podcast will air every two weeks, and from time to time, we'll have special episodes to coincide with the new year or special festivals such as Berlin, Cannes, or Venice. To keep up with the latest news, features, and interviews on Korean film, be sure to check our website, which is koreanfilm.or.kr, where you can also find our webzine, Korean Cinema Today. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter, and of course, tune in again to this podcast. You can also find Korean Cinema Today in iTunes by searching the title, which is once again Korean Cinema Today. Uh, don't forget to tune in again with us on, uh, on social media. We're very active on Twitter and Facebook. On Twitter, it's at Korean Film Biz, one word. And again, on Facebook, same thing, Korean Film Biz, and you will find our page. So I'm your host, Pierce Conran. Uh, I'm a reporter for the Korean Film Council. I write some news for the website that I've just explained. Uh, I'm also the Korean correspondent for the film website twitchfilm.com, as well as the editor of moderncoreancinema.com, a blog dedicated to, what else, Korean film. Today we have the great pleasure of uh, welcoming uh, director Kwak kyung Tech who will be the first guest of, uh, of this podcast. This is, of course, our first episode. And director Kwak is the veteran director uh, who has just released his new film, Friend 2, which just had a very big opening weekend uh, at the box office here in Korea. He also made the, the first film, Friend, which was, uh, or the first friend, rather, which was the most successful Korean film of all time at the time it was released when it attracted 8 million viewers. That was back in 2001. He's also made other uh, very famous Korean films, such as Mutt Boy from 2003, 2005's Typhoon, An Eye for an Eye, a Champion, and uh, some other films as well. Uh, so we'll be welcoming him, him here into the studio. And But first, uh, let's have a quick look at what the big news is in Korean cinema today. Um, so at the moment, the Yon Sang-ho's new animation, The Fake, which uh, premiered at Toronto earlier this year, uh, has been submitted to the Oscars. Uh, it's uh, currently on an, a qualifying run in Los Angeles. It's playing at the CGV Cinema in L.A. in Koreatown. It's been playing from the 14th and, uh, of November, and the run will end uh, on the 20th. So uh, it's vying with another 18 films uh, to, to be nominated for the Best Animation category at the upcoming Academy Awards, which will take place in March next year. The 33rd Korean Film Critics Awards were announced, and the big winner was Bong Joon-ho's uh, sci-fi blockbuster Snowpiercer. The film walked away with Best Film, Best Director, and Best Cinematography. Uh, also picking up three awards was uh, the new period film, Han Jae Rim's The Face Reader. It picked up Best Actor for the lead, Song Kang-ho, who is, of course, also a supporting actor in Snowpiercer. It also picked up Supporting Actor for Jo jong Sok and Best Music. Uh, meanwhile, Best Actress went to Um Ji-won for uh, Lee jun uh, new tearjerker, Hope. And Supporting Actress went to Park shin Ye for the... Uh, big blockbuster earlier this year, Miracle in Cell Number no. 7. Uh, the big hit that surprised many by making over 12 million admissions earlier this year. Uh, meanwhile, the Korean box office is doing very, very well. It recently hit the 100 million admissions mark. And uh, it did that at a record pace, which was six weeks faster than last year. And the year seems on pace to become the biggest on record for the Korean film industry. The success of the year has been bolstered by success by big films such as Miracle in Cell Number no. 7, as well as The Face Reader and Snowpiercer, uh, not to mention some smaller films uh, that have big mid-level hits such as the gangster film New World, the Korean thriller Hide and Seek, the, um, the high-concept kind of chamber thriller The Terror Live of Ha jong woo the thriller again Cold Eyes of Sol kyung woo and jong woo Song. And the um, North Korean spy uh, comedy drama Secretly Greatly. Um, meanwhile, uh, Snowpiercer is currently on release in France. 
It has accrued uh, just over 330,000 admissions in 12 days. Uh, that's as of November 11th, making it the most successful Korean film of all time in France. Uh, the previous record was held by Im Quantex Chiwaisan, which was released in 2002. The film is released on 300 screens by French distributor Wildside. Besides that, the Asia Screen Pacific Awards will be taking place soon, and three Korean films were nominated in various categories. The indie drama Juvenile Offender was nominated for Best Children's Feature. Yon Sang Ho's The Fake, which is getting a lot of attention these days, was nominated in the Best Animation category. And big Korean star Lee byung Hun was nominated for Best Actor for his performance in last year's period hit Masquerade. Uh, meanwhile, Friend 2, which is currently on release, scored some overseas sales and has a secured uh, a release date in America. It'll be playing in the U.S. Uh, starting next month in limited, limited theaters. Uh, so let's have a look at the box office. Box office has been on fire all year. Uh, th- this, at this point of the year, things are a little less busy, and yet at the same, yet still we have a big new hit in our hands. Uh, Kwak Kyung Tech's Friend 2, he's here with us in the studio today, uh, may score just over 1 million admissions, making it the number one film. Uh, it had just over a 50% market share. That pushed the previous number one down to two, which was the Marvel blockbuster Thor Dark World, the comic book sequel which had just over 340,000 admissions. Uh, Also opening was the new Korean thriller, The Five, the revenge thriller, The Five, based on a webcomic. It had a fairly soft opening at 260,000 admissions, but it seems to be doing quite well, and the word of mouth is quite strong. Today we're very lucky to have uh, a wonderful Korean director with us uh, on the first episode of Korean Cinema Today. Director Kwak Kyung Tech, thank you very much for taking time out of, I'm sure, what is a very busy schedule to talk with us today in Korean Cinema Today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me, you know, for your first episode. It's my honor. <laughs> well, thank you. It's our great pleasure to have you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you must be very busy right now with uh, your new film, mm-hmm. uh, Friend 2, mm-hmm. uh, out in theaters. Um, so you have uh, you have returned to, to the world of your first hit film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friend was released 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. At the time it was released, it had 8 million admissions, which right. made it the most successful Korean film of all time mm-hmm. at that point. Um, and, of course, it was a well-known film for being rather autobiographical. Yes. Um, so uh, is, is this new film, uh, it seems to be perhaps less autobiographical. Is that correct? Yes, you're right. And... Uh the first one was was originated by my own experience and and uh, memories, but the second one is originated from the first episode. So uh, uh, rather than uh, you know st- telling my uh, exp- real experiences, uh, then I imagined the story, uh, and uh, I made the uh, whole story. You know with my imagination, but I, I gather the old episodes uh, from the uh, guys who working who worked for, you know, that kind of crime, uh, how can I say, uh, crime organization. So, yeah. So, so uh, sequences and episodes were pretty much based on the uh, true uh, happening, but uh, the structure, the framework itself is a uh, fictional uh, frame. Mm-hmm. So, have you always been interested in this uh, this kind of uh, underworld of, uh, of of crime? And uh, uh, given again the environment of the first film, is this something you had a lot of contact with as you grew up in Busan? Uh, I have a friend, you know, who uh, lived in, like as a gangster, but um, uh, rather than instra- interested in uh, a gangster life, but I'm I. I don't know why, but I'm pretty much interested in a life of minority in Korea. So uh, they are one of you know kind of minority uh, 
group in the society. That's why you know, I think I can. I always have kind of interesting uh, to tell that kind of story. Mm. Mm. In fact, it seems that uh, a lot of people are interested in that kind of uh, subculture these days. Mm-hmm. In the last uh, year and a half, uh, there have been a number of very successful gangster films, such mm-hmm. as uh, mm-hmm. uh, Nameless Gangster last year and mm-hmm. then A New World earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, so do you see Friend 2 as kind of capitalizing on this wave of, uh, of newly popular gangster films in Korea? Uh, I saw two gangster movies. Uh, one is good. And the others, I don't know, <laughs> because <laughs> the new world seems like you know fantasy of the writers had, uh, not that not the real world. So uh, I don't want to cat- categorize my movie, you know, with, with the uh, those two movies. But I can say that the second one is originated by the uh, from the uh, first one. So frankly, to say, I don't want to join that group. Category. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, were there? Uh, do you have any any influences for in terms of gangster cinema from uh, from the gangster cinema of uh, Hollywood? Maybe or maybe The Godfather. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. Everybody, especially man, loves Godfather series, right? So <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's why I I love the movie and I love the way of telling the story of the film. So. Maybe inspired by, strongly inspired by that movie. So okay. yeah, that's uh, you, when you when you uh, are inspired by the best. That's uh, right, that's right. always a good direction to start in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let me ask you about. Um, I think one of the most appealing factors of a friend, uh, mm-hmm. and certainly uh, what, what drew me to it, uh, mm-hmm. um, as I was saying earlier, I saw it for the first time ten years ago. Mm-hmm. In fact, it was one of the first Korean films mm-hmm. I saw, mm-hmm. and it's always stuck with me. Um, it felt to me, while it had a lot of gangster elements, it was more of a, a coming-of-age film, mm-hmm. uh, focusing on the, the kind of camaraderie mm-hmm. between uh, four friends as they were sure. growing up in Busan. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so wh- why do you feel this, this film is different from you? Because there seems to be a little bit less of that. Clearly, you've gone in a different direction. Uh, after uh, Friend 1, uh, there have been a, a lot, a lot of uh, good movies uh, which contains a, a good nostalgia emotion. So uh, when I prepare the, the second one, uh, the nostalgia cannot be the uh, you know powerful uh, device to to draw the audiences. That's why I gave up the uh, uh, that code and and I'm pretty much focused on the uh, 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 gangster genre. Mm, that's it. Mm. Okay. So then in these uh in the 12 years that have passed since then uh, mm. surely Korean society has changed a lot. Sure. Uh the audience that saw friend uh that in that time they've grown up. Right. Um so how do you think that today's uh Korean film viewers will 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 view uh your new film? Uh maybe you you live in Korea f- for a while, right? So I uh, maybe you know that in the Korean film industry have been have been changed a lot, uh, ba- which was based on the uh, the company who who loved to think and who loved to create the uh, new idea. Uh, but these days, you know, the big power uh, from the big company like Lotte, CJ, and then uh, they organized the uh, K- uh, Korean uh, film industry again. Mm-hmm. That's why. <clears throat> they want a, a safe uh, movie, not not ad- aggressive or you know uh, adventure. So uh, some movie directors and producers uh, even copy the the uh, structure or even a story uh, of the fallen films, which was successful, you know, abroad. Uh, that's the kind of big problem. Okay, we are poisoning ourselves. Yeah. So certainly the the industry has changed a lot in that time. Right. And uh, did you feel you had to, as a result, um, change your change your approach as a as a, as a director uh, to to produce a film in this new environment? Uh, you know, I have to survive, right? So uh, for commercial directors, uh, 
who want to make a movie, we have to be adapted by the uh, market and, and industry. So uh, maybe, I don't know, I'm trying, to, you know, to join uh, them. But uh, that's why sometimes I feel a little bit tired. Uh, but I also strongly want to continue my job. So follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, if the opening weekend of your latest film is any uh-huh. indication, it seems that uh, you've, you, you've, you've tapped into the, the consciousness of the mainstream viewer in Korea once again. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, uh, with just over a million admissions uh, on the opening weekend, that seems mm-hmm. like a, a fairly resounding success. Mm-hmm. Um, so another part, uh, another huge appealing point of friend, from what I understand, mm-hmm. I didn't live here 12 years ago, uh-huh. but uh, was the very heavy Busan dialect. Mm-hmm. And uh, it became so popular that it was kind of uh, it was it was taken on by by mm-hmm. young viewers at the time. Um, now this this aspect I'm sure is going to is going to work in the film's favor again with this uh, this this sequel. However, um, it's also an element that is surely lost on foreign uh, audiences. Sure. Um, so uh, and yet the film has still been uh, well received in in certain quarters and mm-hmm. has been well known uh, in, in the last twelve years as a as kind of a representative work of mm. uh, modern Korean cinema. Uh, what elements of the film do you think attracted foreign viewers? Uh, as a uh, title of the movie, the friendship. You know, we Koreans, Japanese, Chinese, Americans, everybody has friends. So they love their own memories. So that's why they can be touched or moved uh, by the uh the basic story of of the uh, friend, mm. and so uh, do you think with uh, with friend two, the obviously the themes are a little different. Is it still largely a film about friendship? I'm sorry. Is uh, is you, by retaining the name friend? Uh-huh. Is uh, is your new film? Is that also large? Do you think it's also largely a film about friendship? No, I don't think so. Okay. Because uh, uh, when when I had a uh, uh, when I the idea hit the story of of the friend two hit my head, it started from the uh, the character of the Junsog, which who's gonna be released after seventeen years, and also I uh, imagined that if there were a uh, a kid between Jang Dong Gun, you know, and uh, a woman uh, who who are praying together. That's why you know this is this movie started uh, from the uh, two characters. That's why uh, it's not a, a friendship uh, between uh, same age friends. I can say it's a friendship between generations. Mm. Okay, uh, certainly that certainly came through for me watching the film. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's Thank the you. kind of a will they won't they can they become friends? Mm-hmm. Is the is the gap too great? Mm-hmm. Um, so between uh, between Friend One and Two mm-hmm. and uh, another of your films, Love, mm-hmm. you've actually revisited the gangster genre once every six years. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> okay. that's a sheer coincidence, <laughs> um, but uh, it certainly seems to be uh, a a genre of film that uh-huh. uh, that you've been very drawn to. Uh-huh. Um, so besides your 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 personal um, experience uh-huh. with uh, with gangsters, um, is there is there another is there another reason you think gangster films are so appealing for you? You know, uh, I don't think the love is gangster film. <laughs> <laughs> I can say the ching ching friend one is two is 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 a gangster film, but uh, uh, maybe the reason I met a, uh, a writer who who was a gangster, and uh, he became my friends, and I asked him to write his own stories. The stories. Uh, that's why you know I made love uh, of his story. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been working together for like for ten years, and his name is Han Sung Un, the writer. And I, you know, we discuss a lot, and we, get, you know, have a brainstorm storming the uh, ideas. That's why maybe if I uh, have a uh, crew while we are talking. Then I can decide. Oh, this is good story. Then let's make a movie with this. Uh-huh. Sounds good. 
Um, so now you uh, spent some time in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, you uh, went to the New York University's uh, Tisch School of Arts. Right. Um, so how do you think uh, th- this this experience impacted your filmmaking? What did you bring back with you to Korea? Uh, the Tisch School of the Arts at NYU is a uh, um, they uh, strongly um, uh, can I say. Um, Ask the students to have writing skill. So from the uh, freshman and until and uh, uh, the writing class is a you know the the credit is the highest. And um, I had to spend a lot of time writing script in English. And that's why you know I they taught me the uh, uh, the skill basic skill. Of survive to survive as a filmmaker, you know. So that's why I when some people ask me, you know, good advice for the uh, for the students, I usually say, write. Yeah, writing is a basic skill to survive. And, and so for you, you um, uh, obviously you've, you've 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 written so many films. And your your first big hit was uh, not only just your your writing skill, but drawing from your past experience. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how how important do you think it is to, as they say in English, to to write about what you know? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have this expression we use in English. It's uh, it's uh, write write what you know. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's writing based on what your kind of expertise and your experiences. Yeah, uh, you know the. Uh for uh, someone who want to be a, a director or writer, <clears throat> uh, the unique story can be extracted from him or her, right? That's the uh, only only one story uh, from the indi- one individual. So I I can uh, I want to uh, I want to exercise that. Uh, uh, start from their own experiences uh, and please deal with the uh, story they already know. Uh, so uh, maybe I can. Uh, I didn't understand the exact point of what, what you're asking. No, I think you're uh, answering my question. Okay, all right, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, uh, so actually, looking at the films that uh, that you've made, I wanted to touch on something that's kind of been a, a running thread through your filmography with your gangster films and your uh, thrillers such as Typhoon mm-hmm. and Eye for an Eye, mm-hmm. um, not to mention your boxing film Champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've, uh, you've seemed to have favored uh, male-driven narratives. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there a special reason for this? <laughs> no, no, not, not at all. Uh, first of all, I'm not a sexist at all. Uh, no, so... <laughs> so uh, Maybe uh, it's very kind of uh, you know natural phenomenon because I'm a man, so I'm man friends, you know. The, so I write the script, right? That's why the the moment when I uh, the idea hits my head is it's it's a, a time to when we drink and when we talk. Uh, so uh, that's the reason, only reason. Then I, then I, my movie starts from main character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, certainly, again, writing about what you know, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of that, again, now there was a, you made a film last year, uh, the Ugly Duckling, right? Which um, uh, is set in during in uh, military service in right. Korea. Mm-hmm. And now, was that also based on your experience? Sure, uh, almost like a ninety percent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Um, uh, so it's been a very successful year for Korean film. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, last year was as well. This year is going even better. We've just crossed 100 million admissions. Mm-hmm. It looks to become the most successful year on record for Korean cinema. Mm-hmm. Fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the mood in the industry seems mm-hmm. fairly optimistic. Yes. Uh, th- this new breed of uh, new generation of executives seem seem to seem fairly in control, and there's a lot of successes rolling their way. Mm-hmm. Um, given that you've, you've been in the industri- industry for a long time, you've right. seen the industry go up and down, mm-hmm. uh, would you have any words of advice or caution for, uh, for these, this new breed of executives? 
uh, uh, I can just say don't copy, you know, uh, think the new story uh, or uh, uh, so there, there are, as I told you before, uh, there are a lot of Korean movies which want to a safe success. So they sometimes still uh, staring the uh, the structure and even the stories from the other movies, right? So don't copy. Just let let's think and let's create something. That sounds new. like very good right. advice. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you: uh, you've you've made so many films, and you must have had so many experiences uh, mm-hmm. on sets. Mm-hmm. Is there any uh, is there any memory from an on set experience that, uh, that 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 comes to mind as uh, as memorable? Mm, right now, uh, you know, uh, is you know that the the uh, for the uh, budget problem we cannot shoot in the studio, right? We have to shoot in location than the uh, the interior of the set, right? Mm. So whenever I go. Some locations, especially at night, um, there are always a person who's drunken and shouting. <laughs> 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 Who allows you to shoot here? You yeah. know, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> mm. uh. you, you must have some very reliable ass- assistant directors to help you with those those problems on location. Uh, especially especially uh, the, uh, uh, the producers and production managers and location scouters. Yeah. Of course. Uh-huh. Uh, so you, you you make a lot of films. You mm-hmm. always seem to have a new film on the horizon. May I ask you uh, what new projects you have at the moment? Uh, actually, I decide my mind last night. <laughs> wow. So we're, we're, this is breaking news for us. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so while I was, uh, you know, interviewed the, uh, 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 the old man, who was a very legendary detective in Busan. Uh, I met him to interview for a Chingu episode, mm-hmm. uh, not, not for this one. And he told me the, uh, the story that he had experienced a long time ago. And he was really impressed, and I, I moved by the story. So uh, I asked uh, my writer, as I mentioned before, the Han sung and and I gave him a synopsis, and he, he wrote a script, and then I revised it a bit, and and the, the investor loved it. So my next will, movie will be uh, that detective story. Excellent, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure it's something we can look forward to. Okay. Um, given other uh, projects, I heard uh, now previously you were trying to make a film, Enemy, right. with uh, the actor Chu Jin Mo, who's right, worked a right. few on Love and also uh, Friend uh, Two. Um, may we ask what the status of that project is? Uh, I love Jujimo. You know, he's a very cool guy, and uh, uh, yeah, his 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 passion for acting is you know excellent. And uh, the 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 title, the enemy, that uh, in the future I will make that a film if if nobody else make, <laughs> you know. So uh, I ha- it's an action film, and I need a a big budget. So uh, I have to wait until I get a very concrete uh, story and find a, uh, uh, you know, a big producer. Yeah, so it certainly sounds like something we don't want to rush. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so uh, you were telling me also about a potential U.S. version of a uh, of Friend. Right, right. Uh, I imagine that, you know, I've, I've lived in the uh, United States for four, four years and um I had a. Uh, I worked with the, uh, some Hispanic people, and um, so uh, I. I can you know uh, imagine if uh, the four uh, kids who grown up, uh, for example, like Puerto Rico, uh, they moved to uh, New York City, and some one of them can be a lawyer, and one of the. Two of them can be, you know, a gangster, and I just imagine the story. So uh, uh, maybe next month I'm I will visit New York and and find some 
young good writers uh, from uh, the South America region. I I will slowly prepare yeah, to make American friends. <laughs> Well, that sounds again. Uh, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, the, the the franchise of a uh, of friend can live on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so let me ask you one final question. Uh-huh. Um, could you please tell us about what some of your favorite Korean films are? Favorite Korean. Mm. Uh, it released a couple of years ago, and uh, the Don uh, Chugak I I don't know how can I translate in English. Uh, introduction of the architect. Ah, Architecture 101. Right, 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 yeah. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love the film. I cried it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. And Suji is very lovely. Uh, yes, yeah. she's very popular these <laughs> yeah. days. Very charming. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, any other favorites? Any, 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 any big classics? Uh, classics. Uh, there was a film called ne- uh, Neshi, uh, which means... Uh, uh, King's assistant, mm-hmm. you know, who removed his testicles. Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that's certainly yeah. that's a <laughs> uh, directed by uh, Lee Do Young, ah. who, yeah, who was uh, one of the great uh, Korean uh, directors. And of course, yeah. Um, he made uh, was it Mulberry, right? Mulberry, Mulberry, Bong. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, very uh, famous. So is this uh, an eighties film, perhaps? Yeah, eighties, eighties, okay. and uh, starting by uh, An Sung Gi, ah, yeah, of and uh, I still remember some, you know, scenes from the movie. It was really uh, powerful, because um, uh, when I saw the television drama for a kind of Joseon Dynasty, uh, there are king and uh, servants and and woman. But in this movie, uh, in King's Temple, there are only three kinds of people there. Mm-hmm. King, Neshi, and woman. Okay. Yeah. So when I was even young, I surprised that how they focused on those three characters. They removed anything you know, else. So uh, I was pretty impressed by that. Mm. Well, uh, that's, I'll have to, to keep an eye for that one. Okay, I'll have to right. see it. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Dr. Kwok, thank you very much for thank your time. Thank you very time. much. Thank you. Uh, uh, best of luck with your continued success mm-hmm. with uh, Friend 2. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you again for being our first guest uh, on Korean Cinema Today. I'm so sorry for my poor English. <laughs> oh, not at all. <laughs> not <laughs> but at all. I did my best. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> your English is wonderful. Thank uh, you. Thank you. All right, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Before we go away this week, uh, I would like to recommend a film, an in-focus film. This will be a feature that will be in the podcast going forward. Uh, For our first podcast or inaugural podcast, I wanted to talk about the film Nonfiction Diary, the debut documentary from uh, Jong Jong Yoon-suk, which was premiered at the recent Busan International Film Festival. Uh, The film won the Mesonat Award, which is for Best Documentary. Uh, It was... uh, a fascinating documentary about um, that takes place, or it looks at the Korean society in the 1990s. It's um, it's kind of a mood piece, very atmospheric. It looks at a lot of uh, of the events that happened in Korea at that time, some of the things that were making making waves in the news, very some very dark things that kind of tainted or not tainted. They kind of affected the the psyche of Koreans at the time. Now, keep in mind that this uh, this happened uh, in a kind of a newly democratized South Korea, which had just just moved on from the successive military dictatorships. In 1988, uh, Chong Dong-hwan was uh, was removed or stepped down from power, and so Korea was newly democratized. So it was kind of coming to grips with this new, its new identity. Uh, various episodes that are highlighted in the film include the massacres by the Chijon family, uh, 
and the collapses of the Songsu Bridge and the Sampung department store. Not to mention the IMF crisis, which uh, came at the tail end of the decade. Um, it's an excellent uh, documentary, which is uh, very interesting, uh, very atmospheric, but it is also uh, very cleverly designed. Uh, Director Zhang uh, said that he tried to uh, edit the film as though it was a thriller. Uh, that comes through. It makes the film seem quite dynamic. Uh, it's not the only uh, dynamic uh, Korean documentary these days. There's been a few. Another is Park Chung Kyung's Mansion, which was uh, re- released, uh, which was premiered at the DMZ Docs recently. But we'll talk about that film another time. Now you can watch Nonfiction Diary uh, on the Korean Film Council's Kobe's online screening. To find that, just go to screening.koreanfilm.or.kr. And if you haven't already, please sign up uh, so you can watch this, uh, this remarkable documentary. Well, that's it for this week. And uh, thank you very much for joining us for our first episode of Korean Cinema Today. Uh, we hope to... We'll be coming back in two weeks, and uh, we hope to to improve uh, over time and uh, but make sure to subscribe to us by visiting koreanfilm.or.kr or finding us on iTunes by searching for Korean Cinema Today uh, remember we'll be on every two weeks and uh, and well that's it for this week so tune in again next time for the very latest in Korean film thank you for joining us thank you